fantastic. Really, really good. You know, it's it's a bit of a, a big hurdle for me. You know, I mean, I've been injured, knocked about a bit and not in a good place for a while. So to get back on the bike that I've ridden for the last six years, but, you know, I've been part of that project from 2012 from Shinden 1 right through to where we are. So, yeah, I mean, sunny day, Donington Park, track to myself on the most trickest electric bike in the world. Yeah, fantastic, you know, really, really good. And uh, yeah, you can just feel the steps forward. I've, you know, I've been out of the picture for a couple of years and, you know, Rutter's pinched my lap record or he's borrowed, he's borrowed my lap record for, from last year. So we'll see if we can get, get into his ribs and uh, try and get it back. Yeah, beautiful bit of engineering and great to meet the guys again. You know, they've been, they've come through the, the years with me, so cool. Yeah, it's just when, you know, when I first saw the electric bikes at TT, they looked like sort of washing machine motors with car batteries welded on the side. It was a bit like, woo. But when I got asked to be part of the project, I jumped at it because I knew these guys are the best in the world. And, you know, I went across to Japan first time in 2012 and, you know, the bikes like, you know, looked great and charging the battery. It was an army of people that had to charge it, had to take the battery out of the chassis to charge it. Well, Every year they've gone forward, forward, forward. You know, first year we did it, we did 102 mile an hour. Then we did 109. And, you know, we got beat by Michael Rutter in the first two years. He was on the American motor assist bike. And so Mugen got the pants pulled down a little bit and then they went back with the tail between the legs. And then they came back in uh, 2014 or 15 and then just, we sort of dominated it. So, so we've gone 102 to 109, 117, 119, 121. So, Huge leap forward, and uh, you know, they listen to riders, they've evolved the bike, made the bike narrower, made it slightly lighter as they go on. Not much lighter because, but they've moved the battery, they've moved the motor, they've made the chain shorts, they've just done loads of things, you know, to the bike and never stand still. That's the best thing, you know. It's it's, it's do you know what? We're going about styles, and people ask me about it. And I saw, I haven't got the right answer for it. It's a really different thing, you know. People say it must be weird. It must, what's it feel like? And it's no gears, no clutch, but it, it's like a high-speed giant scooter, you know. It's twist and go, and away it goes. But and it, it's just, you know, it, it brings the best of you as well. When something's slightly slower in speed, it brings the best of you out because you can hit all the apexes and make all make it nice and smooth and. And, uh, and it's a really satisfying thing to ride. When you do a fast lap on one, it feels really, really satisfying, but uh, sometimes a bit frustrating, but it's, it's, just, it's just an amazing bit of kit. And it's, I said it before, I don't, I don't understand it as well. It doesn't make any noise, you get on it and you go. It's, can you hear, can you see it's, like, it's like magic, it's like got some sort of magic stuff in it, spaceship material or something, but you know, it is, uh, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the, the whole challenge. I've enjoyed the traveling with them. I've we've, you know, I was leading the race in 16 and it switched itself off. And you could see the passion from the team that they were so disappointed with the, with the bike switching off. I was disappointed, I was leading the race. And well, Bruce Hansen, my teammate, picked the bits up. So yeah, we've had ups and downs. We've cried together, laughed together. We've had beers together, which is unusual for the Japanese. But you know, it's been, uh, it's been like that, but we are, they are at the top. So it, it's uh, long may it continue, you know? Yeah, I think it's going to be a close one. It'll be down to the wire, I'm sure. But uh, I don't know with Michael. He's a bit, he's a bit, uh, he's a bit savvy. Is Michael? He's quite a clever. He don't look it. But he's quite intelligent, and uh, he'll be uh, dropping little cheeky innuendos at me all week, telling me things that, oh, this isn't right. That's not right. But I'm just going to channel my focus on my race. And uh, but it's me and Michael are two. We're both 47. I'm two days older than Michael. We were both super teens together in 1991. Both done similar sort of mileage around the TT. So, you know, I, I respect Michael a lot. And, and to be honest, the best man will win on the day. If he beats me, I'll hold my hand up. I will be disappointed. But if I've given my best shot from start to finish, right through the whole thing, I, I can't do any more than that. You know, two years ago, I was laid there. My leg wasn't connected. My back was broken. All my ribs were bust. My thumb were dislocated. So I think. To, to be here today and ride round on that bike is a is a big win-win for me, and what will be will be in the race. But I still, 
I'm competitive, I still want to win, but uh, I'll shake his hand if he beats me.